So guys, today I'm going to be talking about my winter camping setup. Let's get started. So guys, today I'm going to be going over uh, my winter camping setup as I mentioned in the beginning. And you guys can see I kind of changed it up here. I put up one of my awesome tarps I just got from UGQ. And this is just kind of a test to see how it works and to see everything. And by the way, I do want to quickly address something and that is ground clearance in here and like drop cloths. I do actually have a drop cloth, in fact I have the tarp right here so you guys can see. I'm not lying, I do actually have a drop cloth, but when it's this cold out and in the cold temperatures, plastics like these make a lot of crinkly noises and so I'm not going to put the drop cloth down for now to spare you guys' ears because trust me, <laughs> I learned from another YouTuber who actually did that with the drop cloth and uh, his microphone was just crazy. It was really hard to hear. And so there was a lot of crinkly noises. And so I'm gonna spare you guys that. So to avert any comments about why isn't there a drop cloth in this little thing? Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? You know, with the drop cloth or, you know, how are you gonna sleep on this snow? I'm not actually gonna do that. There is a drop cloth right here or this tarp would just lay down in here, but it's very loud and very crinkly. So I'm gonna spare you guys' ears for that one. So without further ado, uh, I just wanna talk about my wintertime camping setup. And so it changes a little bit, or it's changed here frequently a little bit, primarily with this piece here. And this is just a really quick shelter setup. I can do more to make this less uh, leany here. If you guys can see how leany that is. I can do more to alleviate that. I just wanted to do this video before, you know, without wasting too much time. And I will get into what this is in Further a little ado, bit. Let's Bye. actually get into this backpack. So first, I do want to kind of hit on what I have on myself. Once again, I'm not carrying a whole lot right here. To hit on what I have on my body right now uh, as a neck knife, and you're just going to have to take my word because I don't want to go down and get, grab it, but on my neck is the Mora Eldrith, and on my belt is the Prepper 1. So those are what I have on the body aside from like obvious things like uh, a phone and stuff like that. That's all pretty obvious. So anyways, now getting into the backpack and what is on it. So to go into what is on the pack, sorry, this is what went in that, but um, on the pack, as you guys could probably first see, I have tarp down here. This is a 10 by 12 foot tarp. It is, of course, gray and brown for anyone who's unfamiliar with this channel. I've been running that a lot. I also did that a whole survival shelter build with it. Uh, and then secondly, I have the big old GBA uh, Scandi Forest Axe up here as it almost always is. And then moving to the front, I have the SWC SAT on this side. And then on this side, I have the Recycled Firefighter. Uh, I think it's like a lanyard. And then I'm running the Mora Eldris ferro rod right there on that. So I have two ferro rods right there and it's a little bit redundant, but I figured I'd do it anyways because I really like both of them. So that's what's around the pack. And there's not a whole lot, you know, just around the pack. Uh, but now let's actually get into what's inside. In this pack with the orange and gray zipper here. In this one, there's actually nothing but padding. But in this orange and gray zipper here, uh, this one, this is pretty much an empty pouch. Because if you guys are familiar with the channel, that's where I carry the DSLR and the mic and everything that you guys are actually hearing and seeing this video on so this is actually empty other than I have the rain fly in there should I need it it's particularly more summer thing but I keep it in there always because I'll never know when there's potential to get this pack soaked so the rain fly is in there and other than that of course in this little area I'll pop open here in this little area right in here, there's around 50 feet, probably around 60 or 70 feet, especially because now I'm camping and I'm using a lot more paracord. So now there's around 70 feet of paracord, but still a little bit of paracord on that spool. You guys, you guys have probably already seen Also, change up another thing. I'm going to be making the IFAC a more permanent piece of kit. So, what I actually did to make it, should in the event of an emergency, to make it easier to find, uh, the IFAC has now a red zipper or a bright red zipper so now anyone that's unfamiliar with my pack loadout will automatically know that in here there's some sort of medical pouch as you guys can see there uh, 
if I can open it. Uh, the IFAX just right there, and you know, if I ever need it or if someone else ever has to grab it, they'll immediately know it's the bright red zipper. In addition to that, on this side, I also am carrying my uh, awesome Spider Co double stuff. Like, I swear that sharpener, it's really underrated, but it is very good. I use it quite frequently, not necessarily to sharpen my knives, but a whole bunch of other people's knives that are not very sharp. Uh, and it works like a champ. And then on the and another thing that's in here is the Exotac Nano Striker XL. You guys will notice there's quite a redundancy of ferro rods in here, and some of it's because I'm testing some of the ferro rods, and others of it is just because I love having ferro rods. But that is what's all in here. Obviously, with this green zipper up here, in case anyone's wondering, that's where traditionally my water bladder would be. Uh, the water bladder, more particularly the tube, runs too high for risk of getting frozen. So I do not carry a water bladder during the winter. But that is what's in that zipper for anyone that's wondering. So now on to the other side. So it's a little bit difficult, but uh, now on to this gray zipper side down here. This is where I pretty much just keep ammo. And uh, you guys can see there, I, I have some heater packs in there as well because it is winter and heater packs both toe and hand warmers are very nice to have and then I have you know just some mini mags in here and I also have some CV shorts if you see this other container here that's CV shorts those are both for the 22 uh, which of course I run generally so that is what is sitting in there so now to get into this top pouch, right up here, this is where the fire kit is generally stowed, and most of you guys have seen this. I rarely ever remove this piece. I've actually never removed it. Uh, that's just because I really like having this fire pouch up in here. And so this is just a fire pouch with all kinds of fire starting stuff in it. I have slightly modified this now. I also have the Surge. I'm also bringing the surge in here as well, and that's just a really nice multi-tool to have. Once again, it's a very capable multi-tool, and with camping, you guys will probably notice that I'm running a little bit more gear heavy, and that there is a reason to that. Uh, you know, generally with using more modern kinds of shelters and stuff, I'll have more need for things like screws. I'll have more need for the different things that this multi-tool supplies. So, in case you guys are wondering why I'm running, you know, more tools, that's pretty much the reason. Getting into the largest part of this pack, and I do want to note there are two things missing from this larger pouch here. This is the green camo pouch, and that is one, the tripod that the camera is sitting on, and secondly, this is the UGQ. Um, Winter Dream up here, and that's Underground Quilt Company. They make awesome tarps, and I just wanted to throw this one up because I just got it like a day ago, and I really wanted to play with it, take it outside, and you know, start actually using it uh, as a tarp. And this is a very basic setup because once again, I just want to do something really quick, really fast, and really easy. So that's why uh, it set up that it is, uh, but it is a very, very capable tarp, and I really love it so far. So anyways, those are the two things that are missing. It also came in this. Uh, you'll know that this is a super compact tarp uh, because it's made out of a very thin nylon. Uh, it's super compact, and so I actually just carry it in here. It's really nice. I'm actually really becoming more of a fan of shelters that you pack in. Like, I'm really becoming a fan of them because they're actually so nice and so easy, convenient to have. Uh, but anyways, without too much of a chat into that, uh, let's get started. First thing to start out in here is the Silky Big Boy. And this is just my go-to saw. I really love it for firewood processing and smaller, you know, branches for making different, like, tent stakes or poles for the tarp or ridge lines. For the tarp, I really love how fast this thing processes through. Uh, wood of that size. So that is the first thing uh, in there. Another thing that I'm testing out, and this is a really neat one, is this is a double-sided, it's like a tarp kind of scrim on the outside, and then it has a mylar covering on the inside. What I really want to do with this one is uh, put this up underneath the tarp, or this tarp up here, the main tarp, and have this reflect back heat, and then have a ground covering 
uh, down here. Let me know if you guys want to see a video of kind of my thoughts and construction on that. Uh, but that's really what I want to do with this. And I think this would be really awesome. Uh, this is just <laughs> like about it is the whole fact that even if you don't set it up, you know, with another tarp in and of itself, this outer material, this dark green or this olive color uh, stuff, it seems very tough and it, it automatically gives you the uh, good parts of mylar in the rigidity and toughness, the wear resistance of, you know, a normal tarp, because that's one of the big things if you guys are familiar with mylar blankets, they're generally very thin and very weak, very easy to break. Uh, whereas this is a lot more heavy duty and uh, yeah, so I'm very curious to see how this performs and once again, you know, going more gear heavy because I am camping and with camping, I think there's a larger emphasis on comfort, not to say that bushcrafting has to be painful, but with generally camping, you want to try and add as many elements that can make you more comfortable when you're out in the woods as opposed to bushcrafting where you're really trying to push yourself to live off the land with as little assistance as you possibly can. At least in my mind, that's what bushcrafting is. Whereas with camping, you know, you're going out there to enjoy the nature and whatever makes you enjoy the nature is generally what you utilize. So that's more my thoughts. Uh, so here, this is a spare pair of wool socks. These are 85% wool socks. Very awesome. They keep your feet so warm. I really love them. I actually have a pair on right now, and then I have the spare pair. Should this pair that I'm wearing get drenched or soaked for whatever reason, I have a spare pair of wool socks. Uh, so the next piece is, is of course, uh, you know, duct tape. I really love this stuff. It really can help. And once again, this would be nice if, because like I said, I'm actually testing a lot of gear right now. So if any of this tears or goes bad, this duct tape will really help kind of seal it and repair it for infield repairs. So that's kind of why I have it. Plus, like I said, it's really nice, has a lot of uses. So the next two pieces are knives. And I have a couple in-path knives, once again, for more testing. And this is the more Garberg, highly reviewed and highly loved. Uh, and I generally what I'll do is I'll keep a couple knives that I really trust in the backpack and the knives that I'm testing like the prepper one will be on my body so should the prepper one for whatever reason break or snap whatever happens to it I don't think it will but for whatever reason if it does I have a knife that I've highly reviewed and can trust my life on in the pack as a secondary option I also for smaller processing of stuff uh, have the more Eldrith in the pack as well. This is still under testing, but I really love it. And by the way, I keep forgetting to say this, but this Mora and the other Mora Eldrith I have and this Silky Big Boy were given to me as an awesome gifts from Sweet Costa Rica. And but I'm gonna leave a link in the description to his channel. He's another Alaskan bushcrafter and I would highly encourage you guys to go check out his channel. Like seriously, if you guys like what I do, I think you'll really like what he does. He does a little bit more interesting reviews, like or the way he does his editing is quite different from what I do. And that's okay because we're all unique out here. But he's also in Alaska, like I said, but he's down in Anchorage. So it's a little bit of a different environment down there. So I would highly encourage you guys to go check him out. He doesn't make videos as often as I do, but he does definitely make videos like every few months. So uh, once again, a link will be in the description to go check out his channel. That was super generous of him to send all that gear for me for free. So uh, once again, big thanks to him and definitely go check out his channel and tell him that I sent you guys. So. Anyways, without any further ado, let's so, get back in. Of course, as I've covered in other videos, I have the MSR Siegel in here as well for making meals. Once again, Starbucks, Vias, and Ritz crackers are in here. That's never really going to change unless I go to saltine crackers. But there will always be some kind of cracker and Starbucks Vias in there because you always want a quick, you know, caffeine boost while you're out in the woods because you'll never know how much energy you're really going to get. So anyways, on to other things. Once again, lighting. I just have a black diamond uh, headlamp here. I've used this one quite extensively and really do enjoy, sorry, the back was uh, wobbling around a lot there, but uh, I really do enjoy the headlamps and they are super nice, especially like when you use axes. I love having headlamps because, you know, you have lighting, but yeah, you can use both your hands for axes or ax work rather. And so I have the, uh, the black diamond headlamp there. 
So now on to the last pieces and the parts that you guys probably aren't expecting me to ever really have. Uh, but that is actually, I now have the Nalgene stainless steel. This is the 38 ounce stainless steel bottle. And of course, nested with my good old uh, GSI Glacier. I don't think I'm ever getting rid of this GSI Glacier. It is just so old school. You guys can see like these handles are so loose now, but it's great. It works really well. And once again, you know, I got the uh, stainless steel and Nalgene. I really do like it. Do keep in mind, I still highly recommend and love the plastic bottles. I know I get some comments where people are like, you know, the plastic bottles are going to freeze and break on you. If you actually look uh, Nalgene's weather rating for the uh, Nalgene plastic bottles, they go down to like negative 50. So truly, and I've actually ran a plastic Nalgene on the outside of my body at negative 20. And while it did begin to freeze, like the water began to fr freeze after a few hours, really, you know, it didn't just break or explode. I mean, the plastic Nalgene's are a lot more durable than people give them credit. I mean, they are a plastic bottle and they can fail certainly easier than a stainless steel bottle, but I'm giving we're giving credit where it's due. The plastic bottles are still very tough, and I definitely believe in them. But I did want to add a bottle for actually boiling water, so I decided to go over to the Nalgene stainless steel bottle. And I really like this one. Uh, this is, like I said, the 38 ounce one, I believe. It, it said 38 ounces. I'm not sure. It looks smaller than my plastic Nalgene, but I'm going to have to just actually measure it to make sure. But anyways, that is the new bottle. And once again, probably you guys did not see that coming because I've ran the plastic Nalgene's for many years, really ever since I got into bushcrafting. But I decided to give the stainless steel bottles a try. Um, and so, yeah. <clears throat> we've enjoyed this look at my wintertime setup. Once again, I do want to note that, you know, with this wintertime setup, a lot of these things that you see here are a lot based on comfort because that's really at least in my opinion that's more what camping is about you know is to be comfortable while you're out in the woods so that you can really enjoy nature whereas bushcraft is more like you're trying to make nature work for you so those are my kind of thoughts and opinions on it but don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what your thoughts are on what your wintertime camping kit is. Uh, you know, I know the wintertime camping kits are some of the highest diversity things here, in, especially in the U.S., because, you know, down in Florida, you would have a kit that looks nowhere like this. Whereas up here in Alaska, you know, you really have to have a very squared away, you know, uh, cold weather kit because it gets really cold here. So... Anyways, guys, that's it for now, and I'm out.